Hi, welcome to Spoiler Lab. The soldiers of the 20th century appear in the 12th century with a tank and a helicopter and decide to stage a military coup and seize power in Japan. Today we will recap the story of the 1979 movie Sengoku Self-Defense Force. Groups of Japanese soldiers of different types of troops are sent to conduct military exercises. On the way, one of the soldiers notes that Venus has shifted, although it could not cover such a distance in a night. The commander notices that his watch has stopped at 5.18 am. The soldier confirms that his watch also stopped at the same time. In the morning, the group arrives at the ocean shore, where the exercises are to take place. A tank drives up, lagging behind its company due to a breakdown. One of the newly arrived soldiers named Yano throws a knife at the stone, right next to Commander Yoshiaki Iba. Remaining calm, the commander returns it. Yano aims a wooden pistol at him with disdain. Meanwhile, one man is discussing his upcoming marriage with another soldier. He says he wants to escape to Mamuri Station where his bride will be meeting him. Then, they turn their attention to their watches, which have stopped at 5.18 in the morning. Above the ocean, one can hear the cries of alarmed seagulls while the sunlight begins to flicker strangely and clouds begin to thicken. The soldiers rush about in bewilderment, watching the sky turn red, while frightened horses run around. Suddenly, they see a huge wave carrying a boat to the shore, which is accompanied by bright sparks of light. Everything gets consumed by total darkness. The soldiers come to their senses as if they woke up from a deep oblivion and make a roll call. Their watches stopped at the same exact time, 5.18, but they suddenly start to work again. The sun rises on the horizon and the military examine the shore with surprise. The soldiers notice that the area looks familiar, but something is clearly off. There used to be a power station on this site, but now it has disappeared. Truck, an armored personnel carrier and the tank remained in place. The radio operator tries to call the command post, but the airwaves are silent. At this moment, a wave drives a boat to the shore, from which several soldiers get off. It turns out that they sailed towards the squadron, after which they got into a storm and ended up near this coast. Suddenly, one of the soldiers notices approaching riders dressed in samurai costumes. The soldiers decide that somewhere nearby they are celebrating a historical holiday, but the horsemen are frightened by the helicopter that has arrived in retreat. The pilots tell their story. They were heading to the muster point for the exercise, but their helicopter suddenly began to lose altitude and they were forced to land on the beach. Suddenly, arrows fired by people in ancient costumes fly at the soldiers. One of the sergeants rushes in and disperses the militant guests with shots. Despite the commander's order to hold fire, Yano chases the militant samurai away with a machine gun burst. Soon, warriors with other flags return to the shore in even greater numbers. Their leader Nagao Kagatora moves ashore. He examines the soldiers with curiosity and their modern weapons. He and his subordinates decide to introduce themselves. On behalf of the Japanese military, Captain Yoshiaki Iba comes forward. Nagao dismounts from his horse and, with childlike admiration, runs up to the huge tank. He asks about the thing flying in the sky and laughs at its unusual name. Then he runs up to the machine gun and climbs inside. Yoshiaki Iba teaches the man how to shoot and he is completely delighted. One of the soldiers realizes that they have fallen into the era of the shogunate. Nagao tries to rein in the machine gun and sees the bullets mow down a tree on the bank. This causes the leader of the samurai real jubilation. Later, medieval warriors discuss the possibility of adding unusual soldiers to their army. This can help them against the army of the enemy. Meanwhile, Agatha tells Iba that they most likely traveled back in time due to a temporal anomaly. The rest of the soldiers laugh at him, but then archers appear from the water. When the arrows start flying at the military, they are not laughing. Iba orders the military to stay put, while he runs to the car with a machine gun. He opens fire on the attackers, but they smoothly descend into the water, and the next ones rise in another place and also fire at the military on the shore. Yoshiaki tries to target the archers, but fails. Then one of the soldiers throws a grenade into the water, which stuns the enemy. The riders remaining on the shore open fire, this time with old guns. The machine gunner rushes after them, shooting them as he goes. Shells fly next, which easily smash the wooden fortifications of the medieval army. The soldiers drive up close to the barricades and start throwing grenades over them. Iba gives the order to storm the opponents, when suddenly Nagao arrives at the destroyed gate, along with his warriors. He thanks the allies for their help and with particular cruelty begins to destroy the defenders of the fortress. This makes a depressing impression on the soldiers of the 20th century. The last enemy leader Nagahira falls into the hands of Nagao, and he, laughing victoriously, deprives him of his head. His army shouts enthusiastically and congratulates the commander. At night, the military discuss what they saw. There is nothing good in killing, but they were the first to attack their army. Agatha says that they have nothing to do with this era, and if they continue to interfere, they can change the course of history. 
The guy talks about the unprecedented nature of time. There may be breaks in its course, but it is not known when and where exactly this will happen. If they manage to get into the next break, they can return to their time. Morishita's partner recalls that he was the real star in his group and was supposed to take part in the International Autumn Running Marathon. However, he doesn't care about the competition anymore, as right now he is supposed to be at Mamuri Station, where he planned to meet his fiancée and elope with her for a secret wedding. He tells his partner that he wants to find out if other places went back in time as well. Suddenly, a rocket soars into the sky, after which one of the pilots rushes to the cars, holding a torch in his hands. He joyfully shouts that he knows how to return them to their own time. Corporal Janu stops him by throwing a knife at the man's neck. All the military are at a loss and ask the soldier why he did it. He explains this by the fact that the pilot could blow up their car with signal fire. The two soldiers leave the camp to get to where Mamuri Station should be. A third military grave appears on the shore. Iba Yoshiaki goes to meet with representative of the governor of this area. He demands that they deliver to him the palace of an iron beast, an iron bird that flies, and a gun that kills dozens of people with one shot. The captain refuses and says that they can't join any of the armies. Suddenly, Nagao removes the representative and orders to tell the enemy that he's a fool if he thinks he'll get what doesn't belong to him without a fight. In a private conversation, Nagao convinces Iba that the current ruler of Japan isn't worthy of power, since he prefers to stay in the palace rather than go into battle with his army. On the contrary, Nagao doesn't see his life without battles and invites the soldier from the future to fight with him for the country. He invites him to rule together, because the captain is ideal for their warlike time. The military gradually get acquainted with the locals. One of the soldiers helps a boy he meets to catch fish, after which he takes him to his house along with the catch. On the way, the boy reveals that his father was killed by bad people. Entering the boy's house, he begins to play with his brothers and sisters. Sniper Mamura meets a beautiful girl in the field. At this time the captain addresses his people. He proposes to change the course of history and take power in their hands. Then perhaps they will return home. Agatha warns him that history can simply destroy them, because it's easier to do so. Iba turns to Yano and offers to forget their long-standing conflict and become comrades in arms. But he cannot forgive the captain for his betrayal in the past. Agatha takes the side of Iba and tells Yano that the captain was simply doing his duty and was trying to find the organizer of the conspiracy in his unit. This argument seems unconvincing to the corporal and he gives the soldier a slap in the face. Mimura rushes in pursuit of the beauty and soon overtakes her, but the girl resists his embrace. They fight in the water and suddenly their eyes meet and a spark flies between them. The girl runs away again, but he catches up with her, after which she gives up and accepts his kiss. At this time, the escaped soldiers continue to roam the forest in search of the right place. In the future, Morishita's fiancé is waiting for him at the station, gradually losing hope. Suddenly, the soldiers notice enemy saboteurs hiding under the leaves of the trees. They enter into battle with them. One of the soldiers' throat is slit, and Morishita flees and falls down a waterfall. Kazuko, having waited for her lover in vain, leaves the station. A group of military men led by Yano captures the boat, destroying its guards. Iba discovers they that are missing and sees the boat approaching. Yano's group clears out the locals and captures several women, who are brought onto the boat and used for entertainment. Captain Iba sees the bodies on the shore and realizes who did it. He calls the boat on the radio and orders to locate the fugitives. He also offers Yano to surrender, the military man only laughs in response. He intends to continue plundering villages and taking women and food. Seeing the helicopter, Yano orders the girls to be thrown overboard. One of the soldiers also intends to leave and refuses to shoot his own. Yano removes him and starts firing at the helicopter. The soldiers on the shore notice that the traitors came well prepared, taking a grenade launcher, machine gun and hand grenades with them to the boat. Iba orders sniper Mamura to land on the other side of the island and wait for the moment. At this time, the captain himself descends from the helicopter on a cable and begins to fire at the boat. The fugitives turn all their attention to the helicopter and turn their backs on Mamura. He takes out the two soldiers and severely injures Yano before they have a chance to shoot the captain. Down on the deck, Iba sadly watches as a former fellow soldier points a wooden pistol at him. He finishes the sergeant off, and then blows up the boat. The captain is going to rule Japan with Kagatora. The military decides who will do what. Namoto plans to stay with the family he found and take care of the children. In the end, military equipment is sent to Nagao. The rest of the soldiers agree to participate in samurai's battles on his side. In the evening, Nagao's army brings Morishita to the camp, who managed to survive. The soldier is afraid that he will be punished for desertion, but Iba forgives him. In the morning, Nagao arrives at Viceroy Koizumi's palace. All the time he fought, the governor plotted against him and turned out to be a coward and a scoundrel. For this, Nagao removes the viceroy and invites the others to submit to him. 
Those who are not ready to do this are shot by the military from a helicopter. After they take Kagatora and fly away, Nagao teaches Iba horsemanship and the martial arts of the samurai. During learning, the men become real friends. Gathered for military council, the soldiers are making plans to attack the opponent's palace. Iba offers to split up and strike from two sides. Nagao is unsure if Iba's squad can handle Shingen's army and warns that the enemy is very strong. At this, the captain only laughs and offers to meet after the battle in Kyoto. By then, all of Japan will belong to them. The military machines move to the city of Hong Kong and suddenly Mamura sees his girlfriend, who follows her beloved, clinging to the car body. The guy decides to take her with him and shares food with her. To lift the spirits of the soldiers, Iba sends them to a village where it is considered a good deed to comfort young widows. In the morning, they reach the enemy camp and begin shelling the ground from air. Mamura's girlfriend is watching the fight closely. There turn out to be too many medieval soldiers, and they boldly rush into battle. A machine gun and a grenade launcher come into play, and then a tank. Explosions mow down the ranks of the cavalry but, nevertheless, the attackers continue to attack from different sides. Soon they get to the soldiers and fire at them with arrows. The most daring of them try to climb onto the helicopter. There is a real massacre, but the enemy does not think to give up or run away. On the contrary, they practically succeed in setting fire to the tank. Huge logs fly at them from above. The jeep is pushed into the abyss and also set on fire. Almost all the soldiers have already been wounded by arrows. They try to fight back with grenades, after which they run away from the battlefield in an armored personnel carrier. The tank tries to fight off the samurai, but they go on the offensive. The armored personnel carrier falls into a trap and the military has to shoot the attackers point blank. When it seems that the soldiers from the future will be able to fight back, Shingen warriors appear with guns. A uniform volley sounds and thousands more soldiers continue to attack the military. The captain's men fire back with their last strength, but they run out of ammo. Finally, a helicopter arrives to help them. At the same moment, riders appear and throw medieval smoke grenades at it. Iba signs for the helicopter to rise higher, while he continues to fight. One of the soldiers is trying to warn the pilots about the clinging enemy, but he is removed by riders. A young samurai climbed into the helicopter removes the gunner and pilot, after which he jumps down onto the stretched flags. The helicopter falls and crashes in the middle of the battlefield. The military begins to panic. Morishita tries to break through to his comrades, but he is surrounded by enemy horsemen. This event echoes the events of the future, where his fiancée Kazuka is watching a horse race. The soldier screams the name of his beloved one last time. The survivors retake the tank and try to break through to the forest on it, but the samurai climb onto the car and get inside. One of the soldiers cannot shoot at the young warrior, but he, without hesitation, removes the soldier. The soldier manages to make a shot and his young opponent also dies. Iba manages to jump on his horse, but the samurai catch up with him. He fights them off with a grenade, but falls himself. While the enemies are catching his horse, he gets to Shingen's command post and Shingen takes the fight one-on-one. -on -one. The captain fights worse than the enemy, but at the end of the fight he uses a pistol and wins. Iba brings the leader's head to the battlefield, after which the remaining samurai flee for their lives. The six surviving soldiers inspect their losses after the brutal battle. Of the equipment, only a tank remained, but there is no more fuel in it, therefore the machine is sunk into the sea. After mourning the death of their comrades, Iba's detachment heads to Kyoto. They are followed relentlessly by Mamura's girlfriend. Kagatora at this time is talking with high-ranking lords of Japan. He tells them about his promise to Iba. They don't understand why he should miss the opportunity to become the emperor of a country because of some stupid promise to a stranger. At this moment, news comes to the lords of the huge losses of Iba in battle. The captain himself reached the old abandoned temple in Myorm. They plan to deal with a stranger who went against the flow of time. Nagao asks the lords not to touch his friend and goes to the temple himself. At night, the soldiers see that Venus has shifted again and offer Iba to return to the coast. Fourteen of them are dead and history can no longer be changed. An argument breaks out between the team. Iba threatens to shoot them for insubordination. The guys understand, he does not plan to return. Agatha resents this time in which people are so easily removed. Iba shoots in the air and says that history won't defeat him. Soldiers prepare their weapons. Mimura teaches his girlfriend how to shoot. In the morning to the temple. Nagao arrives and Iba happily greets him. But at this time, Kagatora's warriors surround the temple. The former friends look at each other sadly, after which Iba draws his sword. Mimura's girlfriend suddenly fires and Iba falls to the ground. She turns out to be a spy who passed information to the masters. The rest of the soldiers are shot with bows. Kagatora buries Iba and his soldiers with full military honors. Mimura's girlfriend, with tears in her eyes, watches as the Iba warriors burn down the temple along with the fallen soldiers from the future. So what did you think of this movie?
leave it in the comments below and if you like the video please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time. Thank you.